Hey everybody, it's Eric at Nailed or Failed Reviews. Today we're going to be doing a long-term review video and an installation video on a 2008 Toyota Tundra water pump replacement. We recently sprung a leak a couple months ago and it's gotten so bad it started leaking on the floor. We were hoping it's just something stuck in the weep hole, but unfortunately it's finally gone out after 162,000 miles, so done pretty well. A few years ago, about six years ago, I actually replaced the radiator on this thing as well as the other cooling components like the belt, the hoses, and the pulleys. And so we're going to be doing a long-term review on some of those components today as well as the full in-depth installation video for the water pump. It's a pretty involved process because of the placement of it. So we're going to go over all the parts and pieces and the installation right now on Nailed or Failed Reviews. Okay, so let's talk about the pieces that you're gonna need to do this. Again, this is for a 2008 Toyota Tundra. If you have anywhere from a 2007 to around, I believe it's like a 2016, 17 model year, the majority of these components will work for you. For all the other model years past that, just double check, but I believe a lot of these will still work. Doing this video so, is gonna help you out as far as getting into the cooling system. So. The radiator, the hoses, um, the pulley, the belt replacement, things like that. So we hope this video will help you guys. It's going to be probably a couple part video because of getting into here and just how long it's going to take to actually get to the water pump to remove it. This is about a five hour job on the books with a shop. Uh, my local shop quoted me uh, around $700 without the other components. So we'll get into these in a second. but. That was just to replace the water pump itself. That doesn't include all the other pieces that you wanna do when you replace the water pump or the radiator, for example. So be aware of that. If you can do this yourself, you're really gonna pay yourself back in the labor that you saved paying a local shop. So let's get into the parts and pieces that you need and show you guys exactly what you can buy. Please help support the channel with our affiliate links down below. We've supplied all these Amazon affiliate links down below for all these pieces. You can buy all of these parts on Amazon, so definitely help us out. It'll help us bring you more review videos and in-depth installation videos as well. Okay, so let's talk about these parts. First thing you're gonna need is a replacement water pump. There's a few brands of these available. This is the Azen brand, one of the more popular ones that uh, people replace um, Toyota parts with. I believe it actually is a OE replacement part. It actually, from what some people have said online, there's a Toyota marking on here that they grind off. You can see they've ground something down. Um, and so it uh, is, should be a, a fine replacement for OE spec. Next um, thing you're gonna wanna replace is your thermostat. So this is a Toyota replacement OE thermostat. This is a Toyota brand. You can see it comes with its uh, gasket there, its O-ring. And so um, this is what I used before. I've had no problems with this. Again, there are a handful of other brands available that make this same thing. So be aware of that. But I thought I would just go with the same thing. Also, this was available on Amazon. The other brands were not. So I was able to pick this one up. And uh, like I said, I replaced it uh, six years ago when I did the um, radiator replacement and it had no issues. So there is, you could sort of say, let's not replace it now, but I'm just gonna take the opportunity to replace all these parts again. So you're gonna need that. You're gonna need the Deco uh, chain, or uh, not chain, but belt tensioner. Uh, this part is really important to replace because this thing gets really worked as you're driving the vehicle. This is what's gonna keep your belt tensioned as you're driving down the road. And so this is a spring-loaded unit that gets bolted to the engine block. And then you have to uh, crank on this to uh, detension it to allow yourself to put the belt on. And so this is something that you always want to replace because uh, you want this to be, uh, you know, putting the right amount of tension all the time on your belt so that it doesn't prematurely wear any of the other components. 
the other thing you're going to want to replace is your idler, ten idler, idler tension pulley. This is just a bearing with a pulley on it and it's just a component again on your um, engine block that the belt has to go over. So it's a Deco brand. I've used this again six years ago, no problem. The next thing you're going to want to get is a replacement belt. This is a Gates uh, V belt that I've used for uh, the last replacement. I haven't had any issues with it. These are really nice because they have these really nice grooves that are built in that will match up with like the idler pulley, for example. Uh, so that's really nice. And I've had no squeaks or squeals or slippage or anything with it since I replaced it six years ago with the radiator when I did that job. And actually right now it's not showing any signs of cracks or dry rotting or anything like that. So I definitely recommend the Gates belt. Um, I also recommend, and we'll post this in the uh, review comments or the review text on Mailed or Failed Reviews on the website with this, uh, but we'll supply this picture for you guys of the actual uh, belt placement on all your pulleys because there is a wrong way that you can put the belt on these two pulleys, on the generator pulley and on the belt tensioner pulley. Uh, you can actually do that sort of backwards and you can have an issue if you do that. So this is really important to just, might as well just print it out for yourself, keep it with you while you're doing the job and that way you know, you're not picking up your phone and looking for it all the time. So again, Gates belt and we'll supply that picture uh, diagram for the belts. You're also gonna wanna replace your hoses. These again are gates. Uh, this is 23310 for the lower um, lower uh, hose replacement and then 23309 for the upper hose replacement. Just two hoses to replace. Always make sure you replace your hoses because over time these actually expand out uh, because of the heat that they go through, the heat and contraction. So always replace your hoses. Um, I'm not replacing my hose clamps. I've uh, tested them and messed with them a little bit. They're still super strong, so I'm not gonna replace my clamps, but you, you can replace yours. You, you should if yours are showing that they're sort of weak when you take them off. The other thing you're gonna wanna get if you do this part of the job is you're gonna wanna get some uh, clear tubing. Uh, this is 5 16 inch uh, inside diameter tubing and you can get around five to six feet of it. And this is to completely drain the engine block of fluid. Um, a lot of people don't necessarily do this when they're replacing the radiator or the water pump, but I'm replacing all the fluid in the, while I do this job. And part of that, if you, if you really wanna be anal or not anal, I guess, but just thorough about it, is there is actually a petcock on each side of the engine block. The passenger side is much, much easier to get to than the driver's side. The driver's side, you basically have to take the wheel off and sort of shimmy yourself in there. And then um, it's really, really difficult to even just get a wrench on it. So I probably won't do the driver's side of the block, but I'll do the passenger side. And I did that when I replaced the um, radiator six years ago and a lot of fluid came out of that. So be aware that you can have a lot of fluid in there. Um, the other thing is the actual fluid yourself itself. You're going to need uh, 13 liters of fluid for a 5.7 liter engine with the tow package. Um, everything below these pat this model uh, takes like one liter less and then two liters less. So just check your manual. So, but you're again, you can get uh, all of this stuff on Amazon. And so it would really help us out if you uh, buy through our affiliate links. Now we're gonna get into the actual tearing everything down. I've got my GoPro set up. We'll get this camera set up for a couple angles and that way you can see everything that you're gonna need to do. And so uh, stay tuned, hope you guys like it. Okay, so first we're gonna get down here and I'll show you guys, those of you who don't know, there's a little petcock there and just open that up get that uh, draining out you can see there it goes camera out of there and then you can take your radiator cap off also that'll break the seal just let it all start flying out of there so see it's all splashing out of there okay, now. so let's come over here to this uh, passenger side and you can see down in here, I got a light in here. So you can see it 
past all those wires right there on the engine block and it's a little petcock with I believe it's like a 10 millimeter bolt on it and so um, that's what you're going for if you want to you can see there's a little bunch of it's coming out of there so if you get six feet of it you can route it down into the same drain pan that you're letting the radiator drip out of so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get these clamps off you just need to get some C channels you probably have to break this free if it's been a long time and just rotate it also note is when you take your radi radiator cap off and you have the hose going to the overflow tank, they have the little nub that the hose goes on sticking out. So definitely look out for that. You don't want to break that off while you're doing any of this. Um, you know, you could slip and get that off of there. But if you're going to replace your hoses, just get a flat blade screwdriver and get up under that lip of it. And then you'll be able to break that off just like that. And then you're not going to be able to do that on the bottom one, but try to twist it. It'll break free. Put the paper down, towel down in there. And then I'm kind of considering just taking the whole radiator out to make it easier, just because. Just gonna take the radiator off. Okay, so here is where we start the process of actually trying to finagle this radiator out of position. Once you get these four bolts off on the four corners of it, you can actually uh, easily remove it by getting the uh, lower radiator mount cleared as well as the petcock cleared. And if you actually take the uh, petcock out, then that'll give you a little bit more room. Uh, but what you're seeing me doing here is just trying to do it as one person is not very easy and so if you can get two people to help you uh, someone on top and the bottom then that will really help you out because uh, um, one person can pry open the bottom to clear those other tabs what I also discovered is right here is if you actually take off the upper uh, or the lower radiator belt from where it attaches to the thermostat uh, you can push the fan shroud farther towards the engine uh, block so that you can give yourself some more room to uh, get it out to get the radiator out all the way so here you're just seeing me you know mess with that to try and get that uh, clamp broken and uh, if you do this beforehand this will make your life a lot easier you might even consider taking off uh, the um, thermostat but I'm also what I'm doing here is I'm messing with all these different cables and attachments that were in the way and uh, and then got that radiator that lower radiator hose out of the way like you could see there so here you can see I'm almost there these uh, radiators are held on initially by two clips that you see right there it just came out of the hole on the left side here and then um, uh, you just uh, those are sort of like stabilizers to hold it into the body of the of the truck and then here I've almost got it to where it uh, will slide right out of there so you can see you can clear this uh, lower radiator hose mount right there as well as the petcock over here on the right side and you can see you can actually get the radiator out uh, and then you can come back and take the fan shroud out and you're gonna have a lot of room to work with so I think that's really worth it 
it took me I don't know about uh, 10 minutes to do that so not too bad and it really gives you a ton of more room as you can see here Come on. okay so once we get the fan shroud and the radiator out of there the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna get the fan clutch off of there and at this point you want to leave the belt on because it's actually putting a lot of tension on the pulley here and giving you some more um, resistance to work against you know you basically you got to fit in a screwdriver if you've never done this before you will have to get a, a long a flat blade screwdriver like you see there or uh, some type of pry bar and you can pry it in there jam it in uh, one way and then turn the other and get all these uh, nuts off of this pulley system so definitely leave the belt on at this point and you'll take it off after we finish this up but you can see here that you do kind of got to fit your hands down in there in a really awkward position uh, with that screwdriver and your wrench and a, a ratcheting box wrench really helps get this completed okay so what you can do is you're going to tension get a 14 millimeter socket and you just put it right on put it on the pulley and you're just going to push down on it get your hand down on there pull the belts off take it off of the top idler pulley and then slowly get your hand out of there and this is what happens too is it gets stuck okay so what's going on here is that if you don't put your wrench handle far enough down before you actually start pushing on the tensioner to take the tension off of it is that once you pop the belt off and the tensioner wants to release back to its natural position the spring will cause it to go too far up and your wrench handle will get stuck behind the thermostat you can't see it here the fan is blocking it but just put your wrench handle as far down as possible before you actually start putting tension on and as you can see here what I had to do was I had to get a screwdriver and actually jam it in there to hold the tensioner down and then I was able to turn my ratchet handle uh, to the other way and then let it uh, fall the other way to get it off of there. Just give yourself enough room so your wrench doesn't get stuck behind the thermostat back here or take the thermostat off better yet first. But you can see this is just, this is why they charge you so much. And I think taking the radiator out was good because look how much room I have to deal with everything. So. This will make it really easy to get the belt back on. And again, I'm not worried about remembering the configuration because I have it printed out. Okay, so now you can see how it helps to, if you leave the belt on, how it helps to sort of hold, give you some more tension to hold the fan in place because otherwise it just spins on the pulley like that. So that's why you saw me leave the belt on Okay, so now we'll get these nuts off of here. Okay, now we can take the clutch off, fan and clutch. Okay, so we're coming down in here and there's the water pump right here behind this main pulley. And you can see all this junk, this flashlight in here. You can see all that stuff right there where my flashlight's shining and it's all just coagulated up on there and it comes out of that weep hole you can see it's been working its way down here looks like it's been collecting in that little compartment there that's just part of another it looks like part of the engine block so and this stuff is not easy to get off you're gonna have to get a wire brush um, and scrape and clean that off and so this is why it's good to just get it uh, taken care of again uh, you'll see it weeping out of there and it wasn't too bad it was just burning off in the engine and i wasn't really um, my fluid level wasn't going down but the other day like i said i just noticed it on the um on the floor in the garage so definitely time to get it replaced so here it is here actually doesn't feel too bad but uh 
there's a problem with the gasket apparently so get that fixed back up here okay so what I decided to do was I'm actually gonna take the throttle body off what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to declip some of these hoses and wires that are all attached to here and just take a bunch of pictures of it beforehand um, I don't know how well you can see this but I've got you know this whole wire loom uh, that goes to the throttle body just um, all detached in different uh, places so that I can just push it back there out of the way and so now I'm gonna just uh, I got my air filter um, tube removed and I'm just gonna take the rest of the throttle body off of here make it much easier to get to these top bolts uh, with all these hoses now you're gonna see sort of like all these hoses wound around in here uh, but all they do is they just come out and you can see this that they're uh, just sort of wound around down in there so now once we get this off of here and we get some of this other stuff we're gonna have a little bit more room to actually see what we're doing so anyways I'm taking it off you know you don't have to but um, it's hooked up to these two top ones so I'm just gonna take Okay, so there's our whole throttle body, and I'll be able to get that cleaned up because it's definitely looking a little messy. And then we've got the, you can clean it a little bit, you can take that screen out and then clean all that up. And we're going to take these hoses off here from the thermostat. There's a short little hose between the thermostat and I'm not really sure what this piece is. It's like a some type of junction piece. Let's do that again. And watch out for everything. There's a smack on that, a smack on this. that the guy on the other video gave was to take the box that the water pump comes in and just trace it out on there and then you can put the bolts into the right spot where they go so we're just going to set that over here because now you can sort of give yourself an idea of okay where the heck are these mounting bolts at so uh, you got a bunch of holes you know on here and we got to figure out how to uh, which which bolts to actually access All right, so we'll start taking these out of here. So at this point in the process, I realized that I had to remove some of these other clips and attachments that were in the way to access this little piece of hose here. I didn't get a good shot of it by itself, but here you can see I'm pointing at it with this arrow. It's back behind this first 
tube from the thermostat and this is the most difficult one to get to and to remove and everything uh, and it's super important because it's actually blocking one of the main bolts that holds the water pump body on. What I'm doing is I'm getting this little tube off that is uh, connecting these two pieces, the thermostat body, main housing, and this uh, tube here. What you can do is spray some oil, some lube on the, the uh, hard tubing and just grab it where the clamp was sitting softly with uh, an open set of pliers like you're seeing here and twist back, twist down, uh, you know, release it, grab it, push down, and then you can actually push the tube over the hard tubing and that way you don't have to try to bend it or mess it all up because otherwise there's no way that it's coming off of there um, unless you really just sort of like bend it in the middle so I got it clear there and of course it's still it's right in the way so I don't know if I can this is what's holding me up here break that bolt there it gives you a little bit of room to work with one down here next to the idler pulley so not much but it does give you a little bit of wiggle room to try to access those main bolts on the water pump here I'm having trouble getting this top one there we go okay so that is the one above Toyota. Put that there into the box. Here's where you just start taking all the bolts out and putting them into the holes in the box that we made here. Makes it a lot easier because there's so many different lengths that's used on this water pump, so it really helps to use this box layout and just push them in there for reinstallation. Okay, so once you get off the 12 millimeter bolts that basically go around the, the bottom perimeter and there's one sort of tucked up uh, in here that actually connects the thermostat body uh, to the thermostat housing, I guess you would call it. Um, so that's what you're looking at here. This is the thermostat and the body it attaches to. This actually goes on over the uh, water pump itself and is the that's where the, there's a gasket for it. So once you get this off, then you can access these other, um, this 14 millimeter top bolt that's holding in the water pump and then this last 12 millimeter bolt that is the, the far side um, bolt holding on the water pump way up in here. You can't get to it unless you remove the thermostat housing body. So that's why you have to remove those bottom bolts all the way up in here first. And then that will, you'll be able to, you have to take off this hose clamp. It's connected down in here. And then that'll just come right off of there. And like I said, you'll see the, you'll see the bolts exposed. So now I can, actually get to uh, this this 14 millimeter that I was struggling to get to before. So I've got one last 12 millimeter here. Okay. And I've got this. Now I can get to this 14 millimeter with my hand, sorta. I think it's a long one, so that's what she said. Because before the the nipple coming off of the thermostat housing going to this little short rubber hose 
It's completely blocking the uh, bolt from coming out because your uh, socket head will actually get caught on that little nipple coming out of there. So you can't even get the tool off of it to remove the bolt itself. So now there's our last bolt finally. Oh my goodness. And there we go. So mine was leaking right out here. You can see it. See right there, there's a bunch of stuff gunked up into there. So, water pump actually looks good, the bearing feels good, um, but definitely something else was going on. So, get all this cleaned up. Yeah, I mean, everything looks looks practically perfect so I'm not sure not sure what the deal was this is a pulley or the uh, tensioner this has a um, some people I don't think I showed it on the video but it has two mounting bolts and it has a lower one so it's going to sit like this so it has a lower one and then it has one in the middle the one in the middle is a uh, an allen head so you're going to need a six millimeter allen wrench to get that off of there and you want to want to clean it out first luckily i had this is a, a bike tool but this is a six millimeter Allen wrench for a bike from Park Tool. And I really had a crank on that sucker. So um, it was really gunked up on the head, on the head of it, but the threads are fine. So, but yeah, you don't want to mess that one up. Otherwise you're not going to get that tensioner off of there. Okay guys, so we have gotten everything off of here now, the water pump, all these little pieces and parts to actually get to it. So I just wanted to point out a few things now that I'm into it to help you guys out. Hopefully, you know, uh, to just, you know, make it quicker for you. Okay, so you wanna, you're gonna wanna remove the throttle body, uh, which is gonna be this whole piece here, uh, be, mainly because these, these other hoses, it also give you the opportunity to, to clean it. You can see how dirty this throttle body is here. Uh, but, um, leave the hoses that are attached to it attached to it don't mess with those you don't need to mess with those unless they're unless you see they're cracked or something they're pre-shaped to really fit uh, specifically down into this area um, under the throttle body itself so these are tucked in here like this and they attach to this other component of the cooling system that goes between the two heads um, and so when you have that off of there, you're gonna notice that there's this hose right here. I don't know how well you can see it. Let me see if I can. So this hose right here uh, is is kind of in the way, or is, is in the way of the very top bolt of the water pump of, let's see, it's like this one right here, or this one, one of these two. And so you have to uh, remove the clamp from this part right here there's a clamp and the clamp is over there don't remove this one here on this piece because they put this hose clamp upside down so that you know you'd have to get to it from down in here but they do that because your throttle body hoses are sitting right there and if that, those tabs for that clamp were in the up position where you could easily access them they would just scrape up these these tubes right here so um, don't mess with the one that's down here just leave that there and you'll be fine you can access all the pieces you need you can sort of just like flex it out of the way a little bit uh, so that's the first part is get your get your air filter off get your throttle body off uh, put something down in there to, to so no debris goes down in the throttle body um, the other thing you're gonna want to do is you're gonna you're gonna to wanna to take off uh, these little brackets 
for the these hard hoses here. These are hard lines that go to the thermostat body that sits right here. And so here's the thermostat body that the thermostat attaches to. And then this is gonna be down here on, on top of the water pump. And there's a little hose that connects to it. You can see those, those two, where these two are, there's that hose. That's the toughest piece to get out. So I've got it right here. This is what it is. And it's really um, what you need to do. And the easiest way to get, get this off of here without getting it all messed up is once you get it broken free, it sits right here, is actually spray some rubbing alcohol on here and then use a twisting motion with your pliers lightly to uh, push this back over and then you'll be able to get it off of there because you have to get it off to access again some other uh, bolts that are under there. So take those off, this one and this one, so that you can sort of flex these, this hard line. And that also is gonna help you get this off of the other, off the uh, thermostat housing. So that's one part to it. So now I'm gonna get back to putting this all together and uh, show you guys, you can see here, got my all my bolts laid out. That's a really good so idea, just trace out the water pump because there's all different lengths in there and you don't want to mess that up. So uh, that'll be nice. The one thing I was wanted to point out was the way that um, I did it. I could have, if I would have removed these bolts first for the thermostat housing, um, that'll make things a lot easier. So just remove those first. You can see it's just three of them that's gonna sit, sit up in there and uh that's going to make your life easier just start start with that and uh, you'll see how it goes <laughs> 